Hi there, I'm Dr. Tony Mork, endoscopic spine specialist. I know that most of you in the chiropractic community are treating people with pain, uh, alignment issues, uh, range of motion issues, etc., and uh, trying to help people avoid more invasive types of treatment like surgery. And this is a great goal and validated by publications like the Consumer Reports demonstrating the popularity of chiropractic treatments. But avoiding surgery or more invasive treatments is not always possible. So with this in mind, I thought I would try to simplify the categories of spinal surgery that can actually be performed so that you have a good understanding without getting lost in the details of any particular type of procedure. And I want to pardon myself if I keep emphasizing the most important thing in spine surgery is making the correct diagnosis. Without this, it's impossible to know what the correct procedure is to be performed. Let's list the five procedures that actually can be performed. One, a fusion. And I'm sure this is self-evident in terms of attaching two vertebrae together by eliminating the disc space or fusing it, putting graft or an implant in there. This is oftentimes supplemented by pedicle screw fixation on the back side. But the idea of a fusion is simple. It's simply joining two vertebral bodies or more uh, with the use of some type of instrumentation. The second type of surgery is that of decompression. And whether the spinal canal is too tight because of overgrowth of bone such as stenosis or the intrusion or extrusion of a disc into the spinal canal, putting pressure on the nerves passing through it, this would also be considered stenosis. And the treatment is decompression. So it's merely removing the offending structure, whether it's overgrowth of bone and ligamentum flavum in stenosis, or whether it's a disc herniation sitting on top of a nerve, which be, needs to be removed. The third type of surgery is uh, rhizotomy and or facet debridement. So the rhizotomy is uh, actually just dividing the sensory nerves going to the facet joints and the facet debridement is actually a more direct approach to the joint in which bone fragments can be removed from the facet joint. Uh, laser could be used directly on the capsule uh, and other tissues could be removed from the joint itself. Disc replacement would be considered another type of spinal surgery uh, in which one or maybe a couple of uh, discs are replaced with an implant. The implant is fixed into place. Uh, there is motion, which hopefully in the long run will be uh, uh, able to reduce adjacent disc disease since some motion is retained uh, at the level of the disc. And number five type of procedure is the injection of methyl methacrylate cement uh, into a compression fracture. If the compression fracture has been too, too, un too unstable, moving too much, hurting too much, and just not knitting together properly, methyl methacrylate can be a great pain saver uh, by stabilizing a vertebral body compression fracture. Well, this is the most simplistic breakdown of surgical procedures that can be performed on the spine and each one has its own uh, complications, its own results, morbidity, etc. So uh, they do vary quite a bit. My goal when using endoscopic spinal surgery is to help people avoid a fusion and also incur as little damage as possible to structures surrounding the problem tissues, whether that's a disc or uh, bony stenosis, etc. Okay, well, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, the simple breakdown of surgical procedures that patients might be asking you about in your office. And uh, if you got any further questions, check me out at the office or on the website. Thank you.